Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers. Welcome to the Cricket Happening Show uh, with your host Ram. And on this Cricket Happening Show, it's going to be the preview uh, of the second test match which is coming up between Pakistan and Australia. As you remember, it was a historic draw where the Australian batsman Tim Payne, Usman Khwaja in particular, staged a great fight back and uh, saw to it uh, that the match ended in a draw. So now the focus shifts on to the second test match between Pakistan and uh, Australia uh, at Abu Dhabi. And I'm going to do a brief preview of that match and then we have a look at some cricket news. So there's not much to come today. So let's uh, start off with a, a preview of the second test uh, which is coming up uh, between Australia and Pakistan. Now, uh, for Pakistan are the ones uh, who would definitely be feeling that, you know, uh, they would have definitely gone back uh, and really studied everything. Mickey Arthur, the coach, would have sat with the boys uh, and started seeing as to what really went wrong, why they could not price out the Australian wickets. Now, uh, looking at the Pakistan 11, they have some injury problems. Imamul Haq, who played well against Australia, uh, is out due to injury. And in comes Fakhar Zaman. So Fakhar Zaman uh, has not played the red ball variety at all. He has been successful in T20 and ODI cricket, but he has never played a test match. So, um, I mean, one can say that Fakhar Zaman will be making his test debut tomorrow. He's not in some great form, I can say that, uh, but uh, definitely one thing that um, I would like to see here is that Mohamed Hafiz is an experienced cricketer, he's in some good form as well, and I'm sure he can nurture Fakhar Zaman uh, through the uh, test arena, uh, probably constantly talking to him uh, and telling him that he needs to stay at the crease rather than play the strokes. So Fakhar Zaman and Mohamed Hafiz will open the innings for Pakistan. Uh, Azhar Ali, who did not have a good game in the first test match, would be hoping that uh, he gets it right here. Uh, Harry Sohail uh, definitely impressed, uh, got his uh, maiden century as well as we remember. So Harry Sohail is another one. And then uh, Babar Azam, uh, they all got some hits. Babar Azam, Asad Shafiq, Sarfraz. Uh, and uh, tomorrow, uh, Shanab Khan will be playing. So Shanab Khan should be back, according to me. Uh, because his experience counts a lot. So Sharab Khan and then Bilal Asif who did well but could not have any penetration in the second innings, which was very sad. And Mohamed Abbas is almost uh, going to a wonderful record. Uh, he's, uh, he is on the verge of becoming the fastest Pakistan bowler to 50 test wickets. And what a proud feeling that would be for Mohamed Abbas. Uh, <coughs> So that is something that one is waiting to see uh, as far as Mohamed Abbas is concerned and he has really shown he's a wonderful baller. He's one wicket away from being the joint fastest Pakistani baller uh, to 50 test wickets. And I think the record, if my, if I, if my memory serves me right, it's uh, Wakar Yunus who was holding the record, but his record was broken. But uh, whether it was, uh, I, I just uh, had to dig into my records here uh, but nevertheless uh, we will see that um, um, going uh, I mean that is something that we will uh, keep an eye on for sure so Mohamed Abbas is definitely a wonderful bowler and uh, he's a wicket taking bowler and he could be a match winner as well so he has done his job perfectly well in the absence of Mohamed Amir who has been dropped from the team so that's uh, that's something uh, it's it's a wonderful job by Mohamed Abbas and he's a penetrative baller as well. So Sharab Khan uh, should um, uh, definitely uh, play tomorrow. I mean, I, I don't see uh, any reason why uh, Sharab Khan, the leg spinner, uh, wouldn't be playing uh, because it's very essential that Sharab Khan plays tomorrow. So, so we are looking at um, that possibility as well. Uh, and... Um, also, uh, one is uh, waiting to see uh, whether any other changes would be there uh, in, the, in the team composition. 
So let's have a look at the team and see whether any other changes would be there. So um, uh, Shadab Khan to me is a certainty whether Mir Hamza uh, might get his first test cap uh, tomorrow uh, is another thing uh, which is uh, left to question. And the pitch here in Abu Dhabi, um, they say that uh, there will be, be a lot of um, heat in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and uh, that could be something which could be uh, draining the players as well. So one has to wait and watch uh, as to what really pans out in Abu Dhabi. Um, and, uh, and as I said, uh, the spinners uh, might definitely rule the roost uh, probably during the subsequent days. So let's have a look at the uh, still keeping an eye on the uh, Pakistan team uh, here, uh, Mohamed Abbas and Yasir Shah. So they will have a very, very strong bowling lineup here. Sharab Khan, they will have two leg spinners, uh, Sharab and Yasir Shah, and then they will have Bilal Asif as well. So uh, the pace bowling uh, would uh, look a bit grim, but Mohamed Abbas has been doing a good job, so he will shoulder the burden once again. Uh, of being the uh, one-man uh, pace attack uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned. Whether Pakistan would risk that, uh, one, one, I always have a feeling uh, that it's a cardinal error uh, to, uh, to go with only one pace bowler in a test match. It should always be two pace bowlers. Uh, so I am, I'm really hoping that Mir Hamza uh, gets his test debut tomorrow. Now... Uh, now, Bilal Asif has taken six wickets. It's not possible to leave him out. Uh, Yasir Shah uh, also took four wickets, as you remember. Uh, whether So, I think um, Pakistan will be faced with a conundrum here. Uh, but uh, I have a feeling that they should be going, they should be giving Mir Hamza a debut. Now, what they do, who they drop, is, uh, is something that they have to grapple with. But um, I have a, uh, my feeling or my opinion is that Mir Hamza should be making his test debut tomorrow. Now let's have a look at the uh, Australian team. The Australian team almost select themselves. Usman, Kwaja, Arun Finch will open the innings. Um, and uh, then they have Sean Marsh. Now the Marsh brothers, Sean Marsh has, um, was really susceptible. So Sean Marsh is uh, not in any uh, good form. So he will be under a bit of uh, pressure uh, for, for sure. Uh, Sean Marsh, uh, he would be under pressure uh, and uh, we'll have to see, uh, tra this Travis Head is there who looked impressive in the in his uh, first ever test match. So Mitchell Marsh, uh, Sean Marsh, Travis Head, Marlis Labushan who looked impressive as well uh, with ball but uh, with this bat he had a very very forgettable test debut. Tim Payne uh, leading his awards uh, very well. Uh, Mitchell Stark uh, could not uh, really penetrate to the Pakistan lineup. Peter Siddle bowled well. Uh, Nathan Lyon, John Holland did a good job. Now tomorrow, whether uh, I, I have a feeling that uh, they should go with the same composition uh, because it's a winning combination. Uh, there's no need to make any changes. To me, I would rather settle in for the same strategy. I would like to see John Holland be with uh, uh, with uh, the other bowler. Uh, Nathan Lyon because John Holland also took the wickets as we all know. So anyway, but there is a uh, there's a possibility that Ashton Agar might be given a look in just because of his batting abilities, but one has to wait and watch. So that is the uh, match situation uh, as far as um, uh, Australia and Pakistan are concerned. So just uh, completing the uh, brief uh, preview of this particular second test match which is coming up tomorrow. Now we have a look at some um, cricket news. As far as cricket news is concerned, as you know, South Africa will be touring Australia for three One Day Internationals and one T20. And uh, Hashim Amla, the main opener for, for South Africa, will be missing the, missing the series to Australia uh, due to uh, probably having an injury in his tendon, in his finger and uh, he would like to rest it. So Hashim Amla uh, wouldn't be a part uh, and definitely they will miss him as we all know Hashim Amla is such a, 
graceful and a wonderful player to watch uh, and definitely uh, the the audience will miss his presence for sure um, and then uh, as you know the uh, the the t20 uh, league uh, which was going to become a reality last year unfortunately couldn't come to fruition due to some issues but now it is coming to fruition the zanzi super league uh, has been launched uh, this is the t20 the first uh, south african t20 tournament to be held where um, uh, de villiers and gail have already uh, promised to participate in that um, and other than that uh, the news coming in from sri lanka is that uh, liam dawson is out of the sri lankan tour is going back to england uh, because of an injury and joe denley has been called up now joe denley is someone who will uh, do duties because we have seen that uh, recently joe denley is not only a batsman you can call, classify him as an all-rounder because he has got a, a sort of a new thing in his armory and that is he has he is a, he's a part-time leg spinner as well and he has been a part-time leg spinner but he has been picking up wickets so that's the good thing about it so joe denley is uh, coming up in a new role for england here uh, doubling up as a right arm leg spinner uh, and also as a very good batsman as we all know so well uh, that is the match situation uh, sorry that is the uh, situation as far as today's show is concerned i don't have anything else to uh, really go and dwell on if at all you want to really uh, look at look into mine uh, you can always follow me on twitter uh, well dear fans subscribers uh, with this being said it's about time for me to bid you all a very good night thank you